with. This is where I go along and pick up maybe a personality you might know, maybe someone you don't know, could be just a random person off the street. And we have a little chat to them along the route of their daily life. Now, first guest we're gonna have on the show, this one is an actress who has been an actress for a good many years now here in Ireland. You've probably seen her on the stage if you're a theater going kind of person, um, but you will maybe have seen her in a couple of short movies recently as well. So, welcome along to the passenger seat of my vehicle, Miss Claire Blenner Hassett. So Claire, welcome to Drives With. Thanks, You're buddy. in a Mercedes, by the way, a Mercedes E300 hybrid, which Very nice. uh, is, uh, of course, environmentally friendly, which you generally are environmentally friendly too, aren't you? Well, yeah, I mean, I have a background in environmental management. Uh, that's kind of where I started out. Uh, but I suppose the love of what I'm doing sort of took over and that took a back seat for a while. But at the moment, I'm kind of trying to bring the two strands together and, yeah, make it work that way, I guess. But um, I'm always interested in, you know, what's coming up environmentally and environmental protection and that kind of thing. You know, I think it's important and, you know, to create awareness around those kind of issues is really important as well. So. Yeah, because I noticed that on your Twitter account, you're, you're quite aggressive when it comes to uh, <laughs> what you're talking about and what environmental topic you're going to get onto next. I wouldn't say aggressive necessarily, but uh, I just think it's important that people are aware and you know informed of what's going on out there you know in environmental circles and and then to decide from themselves I mean information is, is kind of key and after that it's up, up to yourself what you do with the information you know so yeah. that's kind of I guess what I'm just trying to do just to put the information out there on my own feed and you know it's take it or leave it after that so, so what acting acting is your basic business that's yeah. what you do like 95 or even further than that yeah, on a daily basis <laughs> you're going where are you going today um, I have an audition today for Dublin Community Television uh, they're looking for a presenter for their upcoming uh, mental health series so uh, I'm heading up for that and I'm also involved in um, a production for the 1913 lockout which will be on in the workman's club this weekend uh, it's it's mixing uh, live music with uh, a theatre piece so it's uh, really interesting and there are a lot of uh, good people to coming together for it so so uh, another acting thing is a little birdie tells me you're making a movie this uh, this uh, November in Donegal in Donegal yeah in the uh, winter in, in the winter well we're Lovely. starting out in the winter um, yeah I'm working with Jared Locke again in Letter Kenny um, I worked with Jared on his last film 90 Seconds last year and this is his first uh, feature length film so I'm thrilled to be involved um, yeah it's a really interesting concept and uh, really looking forward to getting cracking on it uh, we're starting well shooting has already started on it but um you know uh, principal photography for my character will be starting in november and uh, there'll be it'll be running into next year so it's uh, very exciting you know? wow all the way over winter right up in, in the middle of Donegal. <laughs> i can see tony gall is going to be good there as the backdrop for for uh, the movie but winter time i mean that's going to be well, you know, cold up there. Oh, it's atmospheric, uh, I think, really. And Donegal is just beautiful. I mean, some of the landscapes up there are just, just incredible. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it'll be good and it'll give a great feel to the film. So, yeah, yeah. And what's keeping you busy right now? What are you doing? Have you something on right um, now apart from the, the community project? Well, when I'm when I'm not running, running here, there and everywhere doing uh, whatever's on, I'm working on uh, an idea for a one-woman show at the moment. Um, again, it'll be kind of bringing together, I suppose, some of the environmental interests. Uh, yeah, so in my spare time, that's what I'm kind of tipping away at. And you're writing that from, from scratch? I'm writing it from scratch, and uh, I, I haven't written uh, a theatre piece before, so I'm, I'm nervous and excited about it. It's definitely uh, a different experience. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm just trying it out, and... You know, I'll keep going. I'm just going to write everything out as I go along and then refine it back and, you know, work with it and see where it takes me. So It's a tough process. I know writing, writing is... I can't, I'd never concentrate long enough to write. I couldn't. I can do little bits. I can do like 500 words and that's it. I'm finished. Yeah, it's really... I think it's, it's easy to start and I think, you know, I've started a couple of 
ideas you know previous to this and you know the first couple of pages you can always bang out fairly quickly uh, because the idea is fresh in your head and you, you kind of have that initial impulse and after that when it settles into the kind of the long haul it gets a bit more difficult as well and you really have to kind of make yourself sit down and just do the work and kind of like cordon off an hour or a couple of hours every day or so many times a week and just kind of plow through and trying to try to stay with it and bring it together and see where it leads it you know and at the moment is acting tough is i mean getting a part or even going forward a part are you in the middle of hundreds of people looking for that same part or is it kind of refined down maybe five or six people looking for the same um, part and just competition all the time i think there there's definitely a surplus of actors you know in the system i mean yeah there are all there's always huge competition and i think that's a healthy kind of thing i mean obviously it can be frustrating at times but um yeah i mean you never know i suppose it's just whatever the director is looking for i mean you you, you have to get used to just saying you know you know taking taking knocks and not taking it personally you know yeah, yeah. And, and kind of saying okay well i'm just not right for this part on onwards and upwards i guess so uh you you wouldn't want to be uh y- you know too easily um taken over by you know that kind of thing yeah. so yeah yeah but yeah, you um, don't take a fancy you just no. keep on going yeah. <laughs> you couldn't you learn to develop a thick skin i think you know i mean it'll always be disappointing if it's a role that you're you're really passionate to get i suppose but um it's all it's all you know part of the course yeah so later on i mean how far ahead are you planning now with the acting thing are you are you thinking about what you're going to be doing next year or are you just thinking about what's the next project that you're actually working on right now or is it months Um, years ahead yeah i guess I mean, you're always you're always looking forward to a degree, but you can never tell where it's going to take you. And you know, from that point of view, I think it's very hard to to plan any kind of schedule because you have to be able to to get up and just go at the drop of a hat if you're you're needed somewhere. So yeah. I, I kind of like that. It's exciting in that you never know, you know, where it's going to take you. And I think it's a great opportunity as well that maybe you don't get so much in other professions that if you have a role that's in any way historical or you know any kind of role that you're researching for it gives you an opportunity to learn a bit about something you wouldn't necessarily have come into contact with otherwise yeah. you know so i think that's a great thing yeah so with the you did the movie last year 90 seconds yeah uh, now i've seen the trailer for that i don't think i've actually seen the movie but i've seen the trailer for that uh, and that looked like a real sci-fi yeah. sort of futuristic uh it was a brilliant trailer because it left me wanting more. Let me, I kind of had an idea of what the movie's about, but I didn't actually know in the end of it then, by the end of the trailer, which is a good, good way to be. The whole story wasn't explained to me, and I kind of like that. So that's the same direction now it's doing the, the feature length. It is, yeah. Uh, Jared's a really up-and-coming director, and he, he's a good writer. And that 90 seconds uh, kind of it dealt with surveillance culture, which I think is definitely uh, yeah, becoming <laughs> such a huge moment, thing you yeah. know I mean it's, it's everywhere they say if you walk around London for an hour that you've been photographed over 300 times or something like oh, that yeah. so you know it's very hard to to avoid it in any way and definitely with everything in the news at the moment about uh, surveillance in the States and that kind of thing it is a very hot topic and uh, I suppose I've always liked the kind of science fiction and action genres anyway so it's something that I'm really excited to work with yeah well it's good I mean funding must be a problem as well for any of these directors I mean I've seen so many of the Kickstarter projects so many of these little starter projects that are coming on I've even received personal emails from people asking me could they help out for free or can you get any money for this project and they look like good ideas but funding has tightened up for everything at the moment and not just movies it's plays as well or theatre shows anything else and unless a, a movie industry finds that it's a banker movie, so a big, uh, a big blockbuster thing that they're yeah. guaranteed money from. They're not even touching it now. So where does that leave the little kind of short movies and and one act plays and things? Where's that? Is that? Yeah, I think in some ways it kind of breeds creativity in a strange kind of way that you have to kind of find a way to to do it on a tighter budget or no budget, I suppose, more mm. or less. 
and uh, that can breed creativity as well because you're, you're then you're kind of looking for solutions that aren't mainstream to to get you to your end result and you can end up discovering lots of kind of new ways to do things you know technically mm. and I think that's really exciting I mean obviously it's difficult there's huge competition out there there's so many great ideas and you know you can't fund everything you know unfortunately yeah. but um, I think the thing is just if you're determined as a film maker, maker or actor or technician or anything like that you will keep going you know and you will find a way to to get projects you know on the go and you, you know just keep working and yeah I mean it is difficult but you know you got to keep looking away at it too you know so- Getting on, since this is like a car channel that mm. I work on, right? So getting onto cars, you're not a big, I don't think you're a big car person, are you? Oh, I like my cars, I do. So um, tell people, tell them then, what's your favourite car? Oh, the Chrysler PT Cruiser. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love it. I mean, it's such a stylish car. It's kind of like an Avengers car. Um, yeah, if, if I had the money, that would be the car. I think, you know, I would feel very guilty about the size of the engine. And if I had tons of money, I'd probably like to recondition it and get a, a smaller engine. So you want to big American version like V8 version (laughs) (laughs) no I don't know but uh, that's convertible one would you you ever there is convertible one there isn't any more they're not being made anymore I've seen one or two around the place but uh, I I don't think so not with the Irish kind but although this summer it's certainly uh, you would have gotten a a bit of use out of the the soft top well do you know the convertibles are actually more useful in Ireland than most other places because it never gets they're probably the convertible overseas in somewhere like Spain as you get sunburnt all the time and the seats are boiling and you can't sit in Whereas in this country, never really gets that hot, so yeah. let's just get a dry day, let the roof down, it never gets hot enough that you're going to get sunburned. That's well, it very rarely gets hot that it's going to get sunburned. Yeah. Um, so, uh, as cars go, right, so we have per- Chrysler PT Cruisers, yeah. is the cars you actually yeah. want, yeah. right? Uh, and you're driving a Yaris. I am driving a Yaris, yeah. Right, so that, obviously, even owning a car at the moment is a good thing. Right? Yeah, oh Because gosh, it's yeah. very difficult to own a car at yeah. the moment because the, the way that the taxes work in this country just get ripped off every time you have a car. So even having a car is good. So you must be doing all right as an actress. Though. I mean, uh, oh, my car is uh, a very much appreciated hand-me-down uh, from my dad. <laughs> uh, the, the Yaris was first my dad's and then it came down to one of my older brothers and then it came down to me. So we've uh, a healthy Irish system of hand-me-downs still going That's on good. in my That's family. That's the most environmentally friendly way of owning a car because <laughs> it never goes out the road, never gets scrapped, you don't buy a brand new one. So. That's it, you know. Uh, so only for that, I, I don't know. Uh, I probably still have my 98 Starlet that I started out with, you know. <laughs> 98 Starlet, love it. Yeah. Good car, Starlet. They were a great car, car, you know. And, yeah, Especially Galanza. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it only had uh, four gears and no power steering and choke start and that kind of thing. And, <laughs> but you know, you learn a lot from that. I mean, you wouldn't get it now. And I, I kind of, I really like, you know, technical sort of things. And sometimes I kind of think in, in a different life, I would like to have been a mechanic or something like really? that. Yeah, really. To get in under the bonnet and learn how to piece things together and that yeah. kind of thing. And oh, like, I mean, I definitely have the Haynes manual for any car I'd have. You know, <laughs> I, I'd love to be able to, to tinker around and do that kind of thing. You know, I mean, you have to be able to know how to change your oil, change your tires, True. and change bulbs. And a, a lot of people incredibly don't, you know. But uh, yeah, I suppose though the difficulty is the more kind of computerized that cars are getting, it, it's much more difficult to do something yourself. You kind of have to bring it into the garage yeah. and, and that sort of thing. So uh, even though that's great, um, what's the word? Great innovation. Mm. Um, it's uh, I, I kind of I'm a bit of a traditionalist and I like to get my hands in at something and uh, yeah. Um. So, cars aside, because I'm sure all the motorheads at the moment are cringing at the thought of a Chrysler PT Cruiser. Because, uh, <laughs> no, it's all good. No, not only was it terrible to drive, but it's a gorgeous looking car. Now, yeah, in fairness to it, it was yeah. a very nice looking yeah. car, very different. It's something really left field, but unfortunately it was so far left field, it only appeals to a very small amount of people. So yeah. they had to they had to can the car. Yeah. Did you come out of Trinity? Yeah. I Trinity did, yeah, yeah, I did. What I did. was that like? It was great. It's a great course. I did uh, drama and theatre studies there. It's like one of the toughest ones in the world, though, isn't it? It's very highly respected, Trinity. It, yeah, it's a highly respected course, all right. And what I really liked about it was that it wasn't uh, well that it, it it was both academic and practical. Mm. So you had your modules on theatre history, 
you know, on postmodernism, on Greek theatre, that kind of thing. So you're getting a basis in the history, which is helping you to understand more so, you know, any script that you, you kind of come up against and it gives you more context historically, I guess, for, for what you're doing and where things came from. Um, yeah. You know, but the course also had acting modules, it had technical theatre, directing, costume, playwriting. Now, it didn't take all those, you, you specialise after second year, so I would have specialised in directing and acting. Mm. So, yeah. And yeah. is there that role, is there that one role that's out there, not one that's written mm. for you, but a, a role in a play that you have, or a, a movie that you wanted to play? Um, is there something that if you've seen it come up that someone's someone's going to actually audition and get this working? What what would be that role? Oh, that's a tough question. Uh, let me see, everybody asks me what my favourite car is, right? <laughs> Which is the worst question ever to ask me. I so thought that same, one easier. Yeah, no, that, that'd be that's impossible to be that. Um, years ago, I would have said Eva Peron. For right. some reason, the role of Evita. I I, I don't know. There is it's is just that a musical, a, or is that particularly? Um, it is a musical, but I mean, yeah, so I, mean, I don't sing know. as well? Yeah, well, you know... Multifunctional, I, I, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Bit of a Will Smith about you. Oh, oh God, Singing, no, dancing, no. acting, everything's easy. No, oh, jeez, it's not easy. Um, I definitely have to do an awful lot of work on the voice to get me anywhere near that kind of virtuoso performance. But uh, I think uh, the character is such a strong character and it's a great role. Um, other than that, I mean, I like science fiction and action roles I, I, I like comedy roles you know so I guess a strong female role you know whatever kind of genre it is is, mm. is definitely something I'd be gearing towards there's very know? few of those there's very mm. few of those parts out there and even if you look through all of the theatre there's very few of that yeah. but being produced there's even less it's but generally it's strong male characters up until they're 60 and 70 years old playing those kind of characters yeah it's definitely uh, a bit of an issue in the industry all right that there are so many kind of female actresses and well they're obviously they're female if they're actresses but yeah. there's, there's, <laughs> there's many female yeah. actors i should say um that aren't getting kind of juicy roles that you can really get your teeth into now i mean Films like Heat with Sandra Bullock and Bridesmaids, uh, there a couple of years ago, are making great inroads into kind of trying to change that around. And and Jared Locke's film as well. Um, I've got a main role in in it's it's kind of it's four short uh, it's kind of four short stories married together and intertwining. And I have one of the the lead roles in that. So I mean, people out there are starting to write stronger female characters. I think, and I think it will improve as we go along. Is that an improvement so. in the actress availability or is it, I mean are the actresses getting better or because for generations we've always had the odd kind of strong character actress out there who was able to do it but they, they got all the roles because they were the only one able to do it. Do you know? Well you know as well as hard work I think there's you know there's there is definitely a degree of luck in getting out there. I mean, there are plenty of fine actors who won't get that, you know, golden ticket, so yeah. to speak. I mean, it's a very small percentage of people who will, you know, make it to the Hollywood blockbuster if that's your goal or, you know, but I think there are strong actors in every generation and, you know, it's something to aspire to. Like, I mean, Judy Dench, Helen Mirren, uh, and Tilda Swinton, like, I mean, I think they're fantastic actors, yeah. you know, and they're yeah, they're a great inspiration, yeah. It's, uh, there's, there's nowhere, I don't think, in Ireland, we, we seem to have this wealth of actors and actresses, mm. and a huge amount of director ability out there, yeah. great directors, and they have a real good eye for things, but because Ireland is so small, but we kind of count ourselves as part of the UK, you know, we look at that kind of mm. market as part of us, but... but in actual fact, in Ireland, there's very few full-time actors, actresses, directors. You know, it's actually a very small minority of people who make it that far. So, what's the difference? What gets? What is there? A, is there a line that people reach and they kind of go, "Ah, this isn't for me," or is there a way that they can become professional at this and continue doing it forever? Is that just drive, or is that ability as well? I think it's a mixture of both. I mean, I think you kind of have to have a no retreat, no surrender sort of uh, <laughs> mentality towards it, you know, and keep ploughing ahead. And, you know, if you have the ability there too, I mean, you, you will 
get the opportunities you know so I think you have to be determined and really kind of put yourself out there you know and uh, keep 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 going at it you know um, as I said you know not everybody will make it but I mean determination and you know so say kind of creating your own look yeah. has, has a lot to do with it as well you can't just leave things to chance you know yeah. so. and is it just apply 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 and try to get these roles get out of roles get your audition yeah out? yeah I think yeah and uh, you know kind of keeping things like your headshot up to date and your CV active and you know putting show real material out there and contacting directors and casting agents casting directors and doing all the auditions no matter what the part is you know uh, I think you know to get cast in anything is is a great honor in a way yeah. and uh, there's no such thing as a small role to a large degree you know yeah. everything counts and every performer there's there that's there or every part that's there is written for a reason and it's integral to the plot and you know so yeah I think you just have to keep keep going keep at the it. head up and keep yeah. going at it. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. it's kind of the same for what I do it's the same sort of thing mm. just, uh, you, you kind of have to be dogged about the whole thing and keep at it and there's no such thing as no. There's always just maybe. You know, <laughs> nobody ever really wants to say no to you. It's always kind of, well, maybe you yeah. can do that. Uh, it's getting, I mean, for me, it's the same. I exist on YouTube uh, yeah. a hell of a lot. And of course, there's like 60,000 hours of videos being uploaded every couple of minutes. Wow. You know? Yeah. And so to get your little niche in the middle of all that, it's the same sort of principle, I suppose, for an yeah. actor, where you get that kind of niche thing and work on that you're differentiating between what you do and what everyone else does because I find a lot of the current crop of actors particularly Hollywood is to blame for this they all blend into one another you yeah. can easily pick them out of one role and drop them into another and it'll just be the very same thing or replace them entirely with a whole new bunch that's coming through and, but in Ireland that can't be the same because there must be you must have to stand out because the crowd is quite big and the crowd is quite vicious I find the acting industry is a quite a vicious role of a place to be in, a very vicious thing to do. Um, I think you have to kind of be careful not to put obstacles in your own way or, you know, and uh, yeah, as, as you say, there's there's kind of opportunity in that though as well, in, in that it's not just a kind of a Hollywood production centre here and that yeah. there are a lot more faces out there and there's a lot more kind of diversity than your, you know, 50, 100 kind of top actors that you have popping up in sort of everything. And, and I think, you know, the, the kind of, well, not commercialisation, but the the way Hollywood is run now and how it used to be run, I mean, it's it's hugely different. It's all kind of, it's a money game now and on, you know, box yeah, office stats profits, and yeah. there's a lot less risk taken in making, um, you know, smaller films that might have something very important to say but don't have all the shiny kind of glitz and glamour yeah, or, yeah. you know, effects, CGI, exactly, CGI, obviously, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, so I think that's something that is kind of taken away from things a lot because there are a lot of small stories that are really worthy of being told mm. and uh, you know important stories and you know sometimes it's the smaller thing that's uh, more important than the bigger thing so this is your destination uh, yes, you're thank out. you very much uh, I'm lost that's okay <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I don't have sat nav in this car, but I've sat nav my phone. I can find my way back out again. But uh, I'm glad you got there. So thank you very much for coming along and doing this. Yeah, thanks um, for having me on board. It's I'm hoping lovely. it's going to be a big, uh, quite a big series. I'm hoping that people generally like it. It's yeah. not some. It's something a little bit left field for my channel, but you know, it's. I had to do something different as well. Oh uh, yeah. Keep it all interesting. Keep mixing it up. That's the only way. Best of luck with your um with, with today with your. Uh, oh thank you. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. I'd say. It's, Ah, oh, you know, I think it'll be okay. Hope so anyway, <laughs> we'll see what they yeah, think. Best yeah. of luck. Yeah, best of luck with the series. Well, thank you. Thanks, Bob.